In this video, I wanted to go over the video routing pipeline in Resolume because it is quite straightforward, but it can get quite complex and you can achieve some complex layouts or uh, routing patterns within Resolume, especially in Resolume Arena. So in this composition, I've just got four layers here and I've got the text clip on each and they've just got the, an L1 for layer one, an L2 for layer two, L3 for layer three, and an L4 for layer four. And I've offset them so you can actually see when they're all playing together. Um, so as standard, Resolume stacks the layers from bottom to top, and that's the rendering order in terms of which shows up where. So layer four is gonna show up on top based on add mix here. And so that's why I get that pink from layer four showing through on top of that whole clip. If I fade it out, we'll see three, then two, then one. So the way that's routing is very simple. Looking at my diagram here, we're sending clip one to layer one and then layer one is sending straight to the composition. And so because we've got four layers, clip one from each layer sending to each layer and then straight to the composition in that stacking order. Now that's very straightforward. And in Resolume, uh, it's quite basic. We're seeing through the comp and then it's sending to the display. But now we can start doing something a bit more complicated. So we also have groups to work with in Resolume. So for this next setup, I'm gonna send layers two and three through a group to the composition. So let's go through and do that in Resolume. So I'll start with group th layer three, I'll add the group. So right click and create new. And I'm gonna drag layer two into that group. So this little line down the side here shows which layers are in that group. And that means they're being routed together through that group in the same stacking order. So if we look at it again, we're still stacking through layer one, layer two is on top, layer three is on top because they're in the group together still, and then layer four is on top of that group. So the way that's routing is exactly like this. Layers two and three go through the group and stack above layer one, but beneath layer four into the composition. And so groups are useful for grouping groups of layers together. We can run effects and also transforms on a group. So if I go to my group tab here, I can scale that whole group together. So see layers two and three are scaling. So I can run effects just on all of the group clips, all the layers stacked in that group. I've got a whole master fader here for layers two and three now. I could bypass them. I could clear out those layers altogether. So that gives us a handy tool. So next thing I want to look at is that's as far as you kind of get with the advanced layer mapping. But then once we introduce Resolume Arena, we have the advanced mapping outputs. And so looking at screen one here, what we're sending is one whole slice is sending to screen one and that's outputting to screen one. So that whole slice, if we look at the input source of slice one here is coming from the composition. And so this is how that routing works. So now I've got advanced, the composition here is being sent to slice one Slice one's going through screen one and then to display out one. I'm using virtual screens for this purpose of this video, but you could route that to whatever displays you have connected. So screen one is to display out. For a new setup, let's do a complex layer slicing system. So we've got, an, I'm gonna have a second screen here with four slices. I'm gonna send each of those layers individually to those slices. So layer one to slice one, layer two to slice two, layer three to slice three and so on. So looking back at Resolume, I've already set this up. So my advanced output, if I now turn off screen one, I'll show you screen two. I've got them set up into quarters. So quarter one, two, three, and four. If we look at them, so quarter one's taking from layer one, quarter two's taking from I said to layer group two, layer two, and quarter three is coming from layer three, and then quarter four from layer four. And so if I click on each of those, you can see I'm just seeing layer one in that slice. I'm selecting that top section and mapping it out individually. So we see this weird effect here because I've taken each of those quarters. Quarter two is only selecting from layer two, quarter three is only seeing layer three, and quarter four slice four is only seeing layer four. So this is how that mapping is working. We're still sending to the composition. So screen one is still active and still sending its output, but then we're seeing direct routing from each layer as a bus mix essentially into those slices individually. 
Another thing we can do is if we don't want to see them in the composition, we can actually bypass them. This is a useful tool. So bypassing layers, if I bypass all of these, you see they're not showing up in the composition. So if I go to by advanced output again in my screen one, we are seeing nothing. But I've got input bypass here unselected, which means I will see those in the output from those. By default, this is selected. If you unselect it, it will ignore this bypass and just use the fading on that output. You will always see it on the input, so you need to check the output to see it properly. But you'll see that fader still works, but the bypass has now no effect because I'm routing it directly. So input opacity is still being selected, but it's ignoring the bypass. So next, let's look at removing group one from the composition and just sending group one directly to slice two and three, which will take with it layers two and three will not be seen in the composition. So looking at that, I'll unbypass everything. So I can see they're all sent, layers one, two, and three are showing up. If I bypass group one, we've now lost layers two and three from the composition and the advanced output I'll send, slice two will come from group one and slice three will also come from group one. So now in the output, we can see group two and three showing up. They've still got the two and three stacking order, but that whole group is showing up in there. So now I've routed a group directly to an output without sending it to the composition. So I could stack all sorts of layers inside this group and have it sent to a screen by itself without going through the composition. And finally, one last complex routing thing I'd like to show you is the video router. So the video router allows us to take an input source from a layer, from a group, from the composition, and then send it back to a layer. Um, and this could be very useful for stacking things in different orders, to pre-rendering stuff and then having it show up on a different layer or a different screen, uh, for moving things around in your composition, or for adding pre-routed, adding effects to this clip and then routing other effects or other sources through it. So looking back at Resolume, I've got my group one here, and I want to send it to layer one. So if I go to my sources, I'll open up my source pane here. For a second, I'll bring in this video routing block. I don't need the sources pane anymore, so I'll turn that off. And under this clip options, I have an input. So right now it's inputting everything below it. Nothing's below layer one, so we're not seeing anything. We can take any of layers, so layer four can show up there. I'm gonna take group one. And because I've got group one bypassed, I need to uncheck this option and I'll check the input opacity option. So I'm taking that master group opacity. And so now on layer one, I'm getting the clips from group two and three. Sorry, from layer two and three. I'm getting the clips from that group. Showing up on layer one as its own fader. So it's another complex routing where we were taking the output of group one and sending it back into layer one, which is then being sent to the composition and to that slice layer directly. And one last thing, just for clarity, I'll show you the slice mapping effect. And this is great for unbypass that layer. Slice mapping is kind of a pre-mapping, so you can send stuff into that using your input maps. So I'll use the Q1, 2, and 3 input map down here. So Q1 to clip one, and now I'm mapping that clip, if I turn off everything else for now, I'm mapping that clip to that, that clip to that mapping shape, that input shape. And I can change, I've got a fit, stretch, which are all gonna be the same because it's a same resolution, but masking just means I'm masking that area of that video, whatever's in that clip. Whereas fill means I'm shrinking that whole clip into that shape. I could do the same for Q2 to clip two, Q3 to clip three, and Q4 to layer four. So now they're all showing up inside those boxes using the slice routing. And there you go. So looking back at the screen, that's the complex routing setup we've done. And as you can see, with Resume, this is just scratching the surface. You can create very complicated mapping scenarios or pipelines of video effects.